Well, there's no point talking the talk if you can't walk the walk. So let's go. G'day everybody, welcome back. So the problem with the YouTube video, I talked about, uh, very briefly, about tapered roller bearings versus angular contact bearings. Uh, you might remember this little snippet. Oh, I've, I've, just, I've just deleted a heap of stuff that I was waffling on about because this isn't the time or the place to get into, into that. Well, all that was was essentially what um, I want to quickly talk about here. And it's not going to be a big, long video. I don't disagree with the fact that tapered roller bearings are perfectly adequate for steering stem bearings on a motorcycle. In fact, a lot of, a lot of manufacturers use them. A GS1000, my XS1100, plenty of them. A lot of them use them. The point that I guess I very poorly tried to make uh, in that video was not that I believe that Suzuki got it right and that Dell had it wrong. In fact, I said a number of times that either one of them is perfectly adequate. Talks a little bit about um, how the ball bearing arrangement that Suzuki designed, engineered, designed and built into the bike is uh, feeble and weak. <laughs> For whatever reasons, he came up with Ratley balls i don't know i can't remember um but uh and why the tapered roller bearing is far superior and look you know in the right application both bearings are perfectly adequate the problem i had was the whole del splaining thing and and why uh a tapered roller bearing was better i think the comments were it was cheaper that's not the case and before you go onto eBay or Amazon and, and start pinging me $20 bearing kits for Hayabusa uh, factory type bearing kits, go and ring your, your Suzuki dealership um, and, and get OEM quality uh, prices. I've done that. They actually are a bit cheaper than what I thought they were. They work out to about $60 Australian each. So that's uh, a total of 120 Australian dollars just for the bearings that doesn't include the seals. So why, so what's the difference? What, why is, is one better than the other? Or um, why would you choose one over the other? Why did Suzuki put these, these bearings into their, into their motorcycle? Tapered roller bearings are designed for high load, low RPM applications. Is that a steering head? Yeah, it is. So why would you choose a tapered roller bearing over a angular contact ball bearing? Or why would Suzuki choose that? The short answer is that angular contact ball bearings are more accurate. So they maintain the position of the shaft without, without deviation, whereas a, a tapered roller bearing has the capability to do that. If you don't, have, you need more compressive force on this bearing to keep your assembly in line, which means that you have to overcome more resistance to make the bearing move. So a angular contact type uh, ball bearing that like you find in a standard in a Hayabusa um, require lighter loads and, and retain a lot more accuracy in terms of your assembly. It's not going to drift around. They can still handle radial loading and axial loading. Um, these things are designed for heavier loading because they do have more surface area in order to be, order to be able to cope with that. But like I said, the offset of that is that you've got to tighten them down um, a little bit tighter than what you would um, an, an angular contact. These can handle a little bit more dynamic loading. Um, so they're a little bit more forgiving of being impacted. So when you have um, your compression, your springs are compressing on your suspension, at the same time, the rear wheel's trying to push to the back of the bike as, as your suspension is being compressed. So you have axial and, you have axial and radial loading simultaneously. 
and it's not a static load that just stays the same all the time. It is going to change, and these can handle that um, a little bit better. But yeah, the key the key difference is um, in the alignment. So your assembly is far more a far more accurate assembly. It has requires far less resistance to overcome um, the frictional forces involved. So it's theoretically a smoother, more accurate installation to have the angular contact bearing in there. They require a bit more maintenance. They're more expensive. Um, like for like, for, for an equal quality, they are more expensive generally than, than the tapered roller bearings. But either one will work fine. I, that was not the, the issue that I had. The issue that I had was around the explanation of it. So a steering, stem, a steering head assembly is a indirect mounted bearing. Um, so we have one facing this way and one facing that way. If it was direct mounted, it would be facing this way and the other one facing that way. That's the other thing with tapered roller bearings, that you must have two of them in the assembly for the, for the shaft to be able to work and maintain uh, any sort of accuracy. With um, ball type bearings, you, can, you could, for example, run a thrust type bearing and a deep groove type bearing. So one to handle the radial loads and one to handle the axial loads. And you could have them both on the same assembly, one of each, and it would work. Sometimes if you have a direct mounted assembly, like in some differentials, etc., they are accounting for operating temperatures. So you may need to put end float into a shaft or preload into a shaft in order for it to be in the correct clearance position once it's up to operating temperature. That's, uh, that's what's going on there. And that means that once it gets up to temperature, you don't end up with too much play or too much, um, too much resistance that could generate more heat, that could cause more problems. If you over tighten a wheel bearing in a car, for example, or pack that much grease in there that the heat can't dissipate, um, you end up with, with, with a, a seized up wheel bearing because it all gets too hot and it grows and just locks up solid. That ends up breaking down the surface of the bearing and uh, it ends up seizing. So yes, correct application. It is a correct application for both. In my view, the angular contact bearing is a better assembly because it's more accurate, it's lighter, it's smoother. The, the cons of it are that it costs more and um, they require a bit more maintenance. It seemed to me that some people were interested, so I thought I'd just uh, share that information. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment, and I'll catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.